Hello you guys, welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. I'm Nikki Pratt. I am a little bit late tonight uh, starting this video. I almost didn't do it because I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm just going to brace uh, and move through it. Satan would love for me not to do this video, um, but I just know and trust and believe that this uh, little series that I'm doing is going to help someone out there, those of you who are in relationships and you're going through trials and tribulations and maybe even marriages, but there is something, even for the men, I said ladies, even for the men, maybe something that you're going through that these stories of real women here in Shreveport, I had a chance to uh, meet some of them at the book signing. Um, this was about five years ago, but uh, these are real, true stories of uh, young ladies, young women, um, some of them are, were middle-aged women um, that actually went through something, some things, some issues. You will hear uh, similar stories probably uh, you could relate to your own. So I'm just going to move forward because it's a lot to read. But I want to read a little insert that um, Tamika Anderson, who the author of the book, um, stated in here. She says, one of the hardest things for a woman to do in a relationship is to see herself correctly. We are beautiful and we have power. That power is in Jesus Christ. Somehow, in some way, we have to receive that power. Hopefully, this book will help ignite the desire in the reader to want something better in our relationships than what was settled for in the past. The Holy Spirit is readily available to you right now. He will lead you into the truth of where you are. He wants you to know your position in your relationship right now. If we surrender to God, he will reveal to you the answers to your past and present situation. Um, if we surrender to God, okay, I read it, I'm sorry. He will also give you insight on what to look for in the future. This is for the woman that wants what, that wants what God wants for her. Take some time to delve into the pages of these women who have gone before us as sheep for the slaughter. Only to testify there is life after death. Revelation 12, 11, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. All right, this is chapter one, you guys. I'm going to be doing these series, one chapter every Thursday. So consider this um, a bedtime beneficial story, okay? This first chapter says, and he took my shoes off. That's the title of this chapter, and he took my shoes off. He was so fine. Everything I wanted in a man. He was educated and in his late 20s. Oh my God, he owns such a beautiful smile. Now, where has this young, fine, muscular, bound man been hiding? To add to that, he had no children, no kids. Now, that's hard to find these days when you're looking 30 straight in the eye. We had a lot in common. I remembered him from junior high school. He was cute back then, but now he was all grown up. I had a crush on him at the age of 12, but of course, it was not too serious. Back then, it was all about innocent phone conversations, so we finally meet again. Only this time, we were two consenting adults. I had just left one crazy relationship in December and started seeing Manny in February. He was a little more mature than the crazo I had recently quit. Manny was intelligent and had a certain air about him. He was a man that spoke a lot of wisdom, especially when it came to relationships between man and woman. We enjoyed each other and would spend hours and hours talking over the phone. I knew I had found my knight in shining armor. I was so excited about him. I could see us as an item, Mia and Manny. m, &M sweet, just like the kid. He was one that would make me proud to show off. He was very charming. The phone would ring and I would say, good morning. He would say, 
Good morning, beautiful. Do you want to go work out with me? I would readily jump out of the bed, put my workout gear on, and, and head towards the park with him. I love to work out, so I admired a man who wanted to take care of his physical body. This man made me feel like I was in heaven. Sure, I had few guys, nothing serious, that I would go out with prior to Manny, but I started refusing dates just to be with him. My old guy friends would wine and dine me or buy me nice gifts. That's what they thought it took to date me. After meeting Manny, I told all of my guy friends that I found someone very special. I honestly thought it was the right thing to do. They knew that they no longer needed to buy my company. I only wanted to be with my new love interest. I did not tell Manny any of what I was feeling. I am pretty sure that it showed in my countenance and actions. Our first physical contact was while sitting in my car together after a night out. I was drunk and he had been drinking. He slowly reached in. <clears throat> I don't know why I didn't bring any water in here. <clears throat> he slowly reached in the V of my blouse and started caressing me. I tried to stop him, but I could not. I wanted him to not go any further, but it felt so good to me. He put his soft lips on mine and seductively kissed me. It was good. I just looked at him with admiration and dreamy eyes. He said, I want to make love to you, but I won't since you have been drinking. I want to be intimate with the sober you. Believe it. I was in love after that. Now, what man would tell you, tell you that he only wants to make love to you when you are sober? Most of the guys that I had been with would jump right in, in the drunk, would jump right in drunk, sorry. They preferred it that way. The next night, I was at his house. I was trying to regain my dignity and pride because of my tipsiness the night before. He and I were sitting on the living room sofa. He placed his arms around me and caressed me gently. He felt so warm. Somehow, in the midst of caressing, I found myself in his bedroom. We began rolling around on his soft comforter. I was mesmerized while kissing those soft and voluptuous lips. His cologne wooed me as he lied on top of me. I was not drunk at all, yet I did not want to be easy. The kissing became more intense by the second. There was a reoccurring, reoccurring voice in my head that said over and over, Do not let him take your shoes off. The more he caressed me, the more I felt belonged. I felt lukewarm on the inside. As he moved his lips to my neck, the kisses became softer. My defenses were feeble. He slowly set his hands down my leg and started to remove my left shoe. I quickly erected and said, no, do not take my shoes off. I knew that if he took my shoes off, that he had been, that had me concerned. He smiled so beautifully, and it melted my heart. I was losing ground. He slid my left shoe off and then my right. After the shoes hit the floor, I surrendered to him. I was naked and was flesh to flesh. I felt powerless but wanted. The experience was unimaginable. For the first time in my life, I really wanted to be somebody's wife. I wanted to be Manny's wife. I was not drunk. I was in love, bare feet in the wilderness. I continued to see Manny for the next four and a half months. In the four months, I had a spiritual experience with God that caused me to give up drinking alcohol. Sobriety was a great plan. I needed to prepare to be a good woman for Manny anyway, so it all made sense. Manny and I went to work out maybe once a week together and ate out once monthly. We would have sexual intercourse one to two times weekly. It was always great. I grew more and more into him. I was madly in love, but I would not tell him. He never mentioned commitment, and I never said anything either. My heart wanted to be in a monogamous relationship with him to the point that it was all I envisioned. He would visit me at home a few times a week. He would stay maybe an hour or two. And then he would gracefully leave. We would then talk to each other at night for hours and hours about matters of life and love. 
After long hours of talking, he would then ask me to come over to his place. I would immediately get off the phone to go and spend the night with him. I was like a kid in a candy store. After the six-month period, I began to feel differently. I was elated for a whole six months until discomfort set in. I noticed a repetitious cycle in our relationship. He and I were not going anywhere. He was still excited about the way things were, but deep down in my soul, I wanted more. My excitement started to decline, and for what reason? I was ready for more. Somehow I knew he did not want more because he avoided the subject altogether. I knew, I'm sorry, I loved him so much, therefore, was not willing to bring the subject up. I knew that if I talked about it, there was a possibility that he did not want anything more. I did not want to lose him. I would have rather had a piece of him than none of him at all. Discomfort continued a plague and plagued me. I began to notice that when I would call him, he would, he would be engaged in another call. He would tell me that he was going to call me back. I would sit and wait for him to call me. Sometimes he would call back and sometimes he would not. I knew that whoever was on the other line was more of a priority than I was. I felt sad and rejected because I had put him first. If I had been on the other line and he called me, I would immediately tell the other party that I had to go. Manny could call me in a deep sleep. I would jump up with quickness and answer the phone. He would say, are you sleeping? Of course, I would lie and say, no, I'm up watching television. It's good that he did not ask me what I was watching. He would have caught me in the very act of lying. I couldn't have... I couldn't have come up with any show right off the top of my head. I remained in this cycle for another two months. I continued to feel more and more saddened. I started to think that maybe it's me that wants him. Maybe Manny doesn't want me after all. Maybe I was not worthy of him. Maybe he wants to marry a woman much prettier, sexier, classier, and smarter. He was everything I wanted in a mate, and I hated that I was not enough for him. Pretty soon after that, there were no more workouts and lunches. Our contact was mainly centered on nighttime conversations and sexual excursions. I raced to his every beck and call, even if it was for me to come only to his bed. And, after, and there I went. I needed as much of him as possible. The longer I was sober, my church attendance started to increase. One Sunday, I heard the pastor talk about prayer. I never did a lot of praying unless I was in trouble. I thought to myself, I guess I can pray about Manny and me. So I prayed a prayer that went like this, Dear God, would you please put us together? Amen. One night, shortly after I made my request to be known to God, Manny phoned me. I got out of bed, jumped into my car, and drove to him. I had the feeling there was someone else in his life much more important than me. Quickly tucked those feelings away. I just needed to be in his presence and, of course, in his bed, too. After intercourse, I rolled over and looked on my pillow. I saw evidence that someone had been, had been there other than me. Whoever she was had long hair. I found myself lying on the very strand that she left behind. This me, this meant that she had laid there prior to me. I could say it was mine, but my hair was short. I overlooked it. Since he was not committed to me, he could sleep with whomever he wanted to, including me. At least this is what I told myself. Time persisted and would not stand still for me. I continued to live in this cycle, and my frustration and feelings of worthlessness increased. I wanted more, more, and more. I could not take living this way with all of my feelings and thoughts buried inside of me. I wanted to take the relationship to another level. I needed to know if he did, too. Somehow, I grabbed a little boldness from the inside. It was time that I discussed my, my concerns about our relationship. I made the call. He answered the phone. The conversation went like this. 
me. Manny, we've been seeing each other over for a while, and I was wondering if this is going to go any further. Him, what do you mean? What we have is good. Why do you want to go and mess it up? Why do people change in the middle of the relationship? That is selfish of you to want to change without thinking about my feelings or thoughts. I guess you are in a relationship by yourself. You want to satisfy yourself and make this relationship fit to your life. Me. I just thought since we were being intimate and all, that our relationship would be growing into something more. Him. We are growing. Can't you see that? Me. No, I can't. I need answers. I don't, I'm sorry, I do not think I can continue to do this. Him. That's very selfish of you. I guess you are thinking of yourself and only want what you want. Since you are that selfish, do what you need to do to benefit yourself. I got off the phone feeling like I selfishly did him wrong. Now, really, why wasn't I thinking about his feelings and what he wanted? I only wanted what I wanted. That was so selfish of me. I was depressed and frustrated. I tried to measure up and felt that I was not able to. Please, God, help me measure up to his standards, I would pray. I continued to see Manny. I did not want to lose him, so I avoided the conversation and put it in the back of my mind. Yet still... All was not well with my soul. I longed for him. I knew that there had to be more to life than this crazy emotional roller coaster of wanting someone badly. And they not wanting me. I had been in several crazy relationships, but this one had more of an emotional tugging. I brought the conversation up again one week later. I got the same type of conversation with a little something extra, me. What is the purpose of us being intimate if this is all to our relationship? We, don't, we do not really need to have sex if this isn't going anywhere. Him, you mean to tell me that you are willing to give up this beautiful relationship we have because of some selfishness? I have never had this kind of relationship. I have never had a connection with any woman as I have with you. It's not about the sex that makes this relationship good. It is our constant conversation. The sex is additional. Besides, it's not until after we have had sex and you have gone away that I feel the most intimate with you. Not during the sex. It's what I feel for you after the sex. Me, listening and wanting to say, that is so beautiful. Now, I'm going to uh, add a little something here. Didn't, while he was talking, it just remind me of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Anyway, the next portion of the site is just clothed with boots. My birthday had come and Manny showed up at my home with a present. He bought me a pair of tall, black fitted boots that went up to my knees. They were not my type, but the mere fact that he bought them caused me to fall deeper for him. I wore them as much as possible. Most of my wardrobe was black, therefore they went with almost everything that I had. He really does love me, I would tell myself. As days went by, my frustration level continued to seesaw. I started asking myself some common sense questions. If he loved me, why am I feeling sad and confused? If this man loved me, wouldn't he call me his girlfriend? Why hadn't I met his parents? Why didn't he only call me to come to his house at night? Why were there no meaningful dates like the movies, dinner, and other places? Why was the relationship so stagnant? I was so emotionally and mentally confused until it had become unbearable. My whole world was consumed with this man. My every thought and talk was about him. I had no focus on myself of my life. I just wanted him and wanted him to want me. What was I to do and how could I change my circumstances? My spirit was so dismayed and miserable. I wanted him. I had friends close to me that frowned on our relationships. Of course, they did not know him like 
I knew him. One afternoon of soaking in my open wounds, I walked outside to empty the trash. Out of the blue, I was trapped. A Jehovah Witness held me captive as she ministered from the Watchtower book. She was a young, tall, nice lady. Her, past, her personality was such a beautiful one. I could not bring myself to be mean to her. I forced myself to listen for a few minutes. She started to overtalk her welcome, and I really wanted her to stop. Then I had this brilliant idea. Let's see how much conversation she has after I tell her my problems. I bet once she hears my love drama, she'll want to leave. I was right. I held that girl up for about an hour telling her how much I loved Manny. She tried to leave, but I wanted her to know how it felt so how it felt to trap people with nonsense babbling. More than ever, I really needed someone to talk to. I can attest to this fact. If you need to get rid of someone you do not really want around, tell them about your love injuries and all the man problems that you have. It'll make a person question their reason for being around you in the first place. After I finished talking, she had this weird look on her face. She paused a few seconds and said, If this man for you, ask God to reveal it to you. She reached in her shoulder bag and gave me two thin books. She said her goodbyes and walked away. I laughed when she left because I felt as if I had won the battle. Reality said in my in and my laugh diminished. I was curious about what she recommended me to do. Days went by and I continued to stay in the madness. It was taxing on my emotions. I would wake up with bags under my eyes looking tired and fatigued. It was because I stayed up all night wondering why he did not call. He called me two nights ago, but not last night. I knew those nights I knew those nights that I did not hear from him, the long-haired girl was in my place. When I got to work, my colleagues suggested that I get some rest. They told me that I looked tired. I wanted to tell them where to go. I went home and repeated the same cycle. This time, I refused to have lonely and miserable nights like the one before. I needed some peace in my heart. I wanted to get to bed early so that I could avoid feeling the pain of him possibly not calling. I took Benadryl and went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and I realized that he had not called. I'm glad I did not have to feel it. I rolled over out of bed, fell to my knees and started praying. I asked God to help my situation. I asked God to hurry up and give him to me so that I could move forward. As I lifted my head, I heard a soft voice say, stop sleeping with him. I want to show you something. I said, huh? Now, I know that it had to be God because never in a million years would I have chosen to abstain from sexual intercourse with this man. This was going to be a hard, this was going to be hard, God, but I'll do it so that you can bless me with him. He was worth giving it a shot. I tried it. I actually went a week without having sex with him. I started to feel good about myself. I felt esteemed. However, I noticed something odd. He had not called me in more days than usual. I became frantic and confronted him on why he had not called. He said, you didn't call me. I said, okay, it's true. I could have called him just like I was asking him to call me, right? The man had a point. I started conversing with him again. Well, yes, I eventually ended back into this man's bed. This time, my frustration level increased more than before. For one, I broke my commitment to my abstaining from sex policy. Second, I still had no commitment from him. I was right back to square one. My frustration brought me right back to my knees to pray. I went back before God to bother him again. When I got up off my knees, my answer was the same. Go back to the no sex policy. I did it again. This time I went two weeks. He would call, but not that much. His conversations turned dry. I would have to make the calls most of the time. It appeared as if he was withdrawing from me. I could not stand being lonely and away from him. I had to call him just to be with him in his bed. 
I really love Manny. Repeatedly, my emotions were driving me insane. I was crazy and mainly because I had come to the realization that God wanted me to abstain. Now, I was letting God and Manny down. He was not willing to commit to me, and I was not committing to the no sex rule. All of it made me feel guilty and crazy. I wanted more, and he wanted the relationship to stay the same. Now, how did we get here? Where were we headed? One glorious day, I was on my knees praying for a while. I begged and pleaded God about my relationship and my life. I wanted answers from God. I had gotten to a point where I was serious about the direction in my life. I wanted to go somewhere. I had no room to play. I shared with God that I tried to stop sleeping with this man and that I was weak for him. I explained to God that I wanted him so much and asked him, if he would be kind enough to give him to me. I continue to tell God that I could not give up having sex with Manny because it's my strongest connection with him. After saying this, I paused only to have a wow moment. Surprisingly, I heard myself. I had a revelation. Then I heard a quiet voice that said, I know you can't stop on your own. Allow me to do it for you. It was like God was saying, surrender to me and I will help you. I was able to identify that I was weak in the area and needed his help. Afterwards, it is like the spirit of the Lord took over. Manny would call me less and less. The times when I attempted to go to his house, something would intervene and I would not make it there. This made me even crazier. I was a basket case. I was emotionally in the trenches of dark despair. I had asked God to help me, but I did not like not seeing him. The longer I was away from him, I started to face a cold, harsh reality. Manny may never want me. He may never want me to be his woman nor wife. Manny did not want me in that way. He only wanted me the way we were. Now that hurt. What was I supposed to do with this information? I loved him so dearly and my soul ached for him. Where do I go from here? I was love struck and could not do a darn thing about it. I, was, I still wanted him and wanted to be in his bed, but I had not heard from him. Two nights later, I was sitting at my computer thinking about him and longing for him. It was like he was leaving my life slowly but surely. Only sex can keep us together at this point. I had so much crying to do, but I could not let it come out. The agony plagued my soul, and that's when I shouted to God, Please, Lord, remove this man from my life. I would much rather die than continue to live in this web of deception. I can't keep having sex with him and not have him. It's making me sick. Ten, ten minutes later, Manny called. I went back to his house and in his bed. The night, that night, he felt so good next to my body. The next morning, I smiled as I watched him sleep. I missed him. I looked up and asked God to give me a sign if he is the man I'm supposed to spend my life with. As I finished asking, the alarm clock went off very loudly. I said, thank you, God. The next day, I was in the store with my birthday boots on that he had bought me. The heel broke. I was embarrassed, stepping out. A month later, I was still trying to figure out where our relationship was going. I had talked to Manny in the early morning, and it was a good conversation. Later that day, my coworker came to my house and spanked some emotionally devastating news on me. She said that Manny called her and talked for hours. I was anxious to hear what he had to tell her about me. She said, Manny is getting ready to have a baby with his ex-girlfriend. She said that he was so happy about it. There was mere silence in the room. I could not say a word. My stomach dropped. I was emotionally numb. I wanted to burst into tears and yell out, Are you serious? Why, why, why? Didn't he know that I wanted to be the one to have his children? Didn't he know that I wanted to be his wife? I wanted to have his last name. I gave up other guys for him, and I was willing to make these necessary changes in my life to be his wife. I love him so much. Doesn't he even care about me? That's what I, that's what I wanted to say. 
I kept my cool. I played it off well with my tough exterior. She knew that I was hurt. That's why she came to my house instead of breaking the news to me over the phone. She said that Manny was too ashamed to tell me, so he told her. He knew that she would relay the message. She asked me if I wanted to go hang out to ease my mind. We were to a night we were at a night lounge. I hid from her most of the night in the club's private room. A man came over for a small talk. I spilled my guts to him and cried on his shoulder. He said, Baby, you got heavy problems. He walked away. A few days went by and I started to process our relationship. I actually thought that if I stopped sleeping with the man, then he was going to see how important I was to him. I wanted him to say, Mia, I would rather commit to you rather than lose you. I was so wrong. One week had gone by and I decided to call him. We agreed to meet for breakfast. He appeared remorseful but happy at the same time. All these thoughts were flowing in my mind about ways to make our relationship work. After all, what we had was so beautiful. It did not go the way I had planned. Instead, he responded, I have a baby on the way. That's what I am committing to. Well, there was no way I was going to be able to compete with that. He told me that I would wake up one day and realize that I was worth more than what I tried to sell it for. He really did not understand my love for him. I cried for two days only to realize that the woman that was carrying his baby worked directly across the street from my place of employment. This was such cruel irony. I could not believe that God was adding insult to my injury. That's the real great God. I watched her as she grew from month to month during her pregnancy. I saw baby shower balloons that our co-workers were carrying inside the building. They were all happily celebrating the coming of the new baby. It was hard getting into some acceptance. It was really over. Walking tall. God helped me process through the part of my life. In retrospection, I got revelation knowledge about the relationship. I realized that my perception of myself was distorted and caused me to remain in mental and emotional bondage. It was not Manny that I could not measure up to. It was self and the position God predestined me to have as a woman. How could I measure up when I did not know what God wanted for my life? God is in love with me. He looked out for me and gave me the best advice. I should have been seeking God's love and wisdom instead of seeking man and my own selfish desires. It was not in seeking man, but in seeking God and his word. My prayers worked. When I cried out to God at my computer desk, I actually saw him acting on my behalf. I was really serious at the moment about getting out of my situation, but I lacked the power to do it by myself. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, the scripture states, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I believe not I did not believe what God said about me, nor did I know what he said. I found out when I read his word. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalms one thirty nine fourteen. Today I believe that. I had to see myself the way God sees me. That was one of the reasons the relationship caused me so much pain. I was looking at me, Manny, and the entire relationship all wrong. It was revealed to me that my shoes that he removed represented a covering of my feet and my walk. My covering was removed. They supported me in my mobility. I gave him authority and permission to remove them. This made me vulnerable on my walk. Those boots that he bought me looked like hooker boots. They represented exactly what I walked into, a state of prostitution. While being exposed to the world, to the wild, I'm sorry, it was like I was wayward. I was a wayward woman, woman selling myself for cheap and never getting my pay for what I was worth. I had lust all over me. We both did. I continued to walk in lust until I cried out to God. I did not understand that I was controlled by lust. However, God knew it. 
He understood exactly where I was, and he helped me. The breaking of the heel on the boot represented me being broke down in the spirit and walking unbalanced. I was broken and broke down in them. When I was broken and was at my worst, God was able to perform at his best. I could not wear those boots anymore. I had to get rid of them, which caused me to walk right out of my situation and into deliverance. God did for me what I could not do for myself. I believe this was the part where God was breaking the lust of this relationship of my life. It is amazing how God allowed me to see this woman every day in her pregnancy. I know that he kept my situation in my faith. I needed it at the time. If it were removed from my sight, I probably would have been able to justify why I needed to go back to Manny's bed. The old saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. It being in front from of me, it being in front of me helped me to deal with my reality. There was healing that needed to take place and it did. Besides, God knew exactly what I needed and how much I could bear. Oh yeah, that alarm clock that went off loudly while I was in bed? That was God too. He was giving me a sign all right. The sign wasn't that Manny was the one for me. God was telling me to wake up up. Duh. That is the whole purpose for alarm clocks. When you think that you are in love, you will make everything be a sign in your favor. You discern if he is for you through prayer and the word of God. So, I am writing to tell all my sisters to wake up. If you are in this type of situation, cry out to the Lord and he will come to you. He will come to your beck and call. If you want him, he will come to your aid. You do not have to remain in the situation you are in. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is true. If you are willing to try and trust God, you must be truthful with yourself. The best thing about my experience is that I did not let the relationship stop me from loving. I refused to give up on love. I did not let it cause me to be bitter. I wanted to continue to love because God made me the way, that way. Sorry. I just decided that I wanted God to choose whom to give my love. Thank you, Lord, and glory to the highest, God. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The title, the name of this book is because I cried out, Tamika Thomas Anderson um, is the author of this book. Okay, this is a picture of her right here. Um, she is actually uh, a first cousin of my ex-husband, my current ex-husband. Um, but yes, so this book has eight chapters. Um, you can comment. I hope, um, you know, this is my first time doing something like this, but I know sometimes when we um, hear of, of similar situations that we're going through, something in this story may help you um, get through whatever you're going through. And um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please comment. Um, because I cried out, chapter one. See you next video. Love you guys. Thanks.